Hi, I'm Dave Carger for IMDb at the 2018 Toronto International Film Festival, and I'm now joined by, from the movie Farming, the writer-director Adewale Akinoye Agbaje, and his cast members Kate Beckinsale, Damson Idris, and Gugu Mbatha-Ra. Great to see you all. Thanks so much for coming in. Adewale, this is such a personal movie for you. It's your life story that you have written and directed, and it's been a long time coming to get to the movie screen. You never gave up on it. How many times did this project die and come back to life? I mean, <clears throat> this, um, I, countless. I mean, it's been more than 14 years uh, in, in, in the making. I could make a movie about the making of farming. <laughs> um, you know, and, and for various reasons, you know, uh, whether it's financial, we were very close to having money and then one part falls out. Um, it, it's just been such an arduous journey, but, you know, it was a project that um, I couldn't live without telling and that's what really motivated me to continue. But, um, you know, I had grace of God help me with certain uh, at certain moments in it, and, and Sundance was key to that. You know, um, the, the script was born out of me just not being able to sleep, and um, and and it was very cathartic initially. And I, I used to write ten pages before I slept, and ended up in two weeks having a five hundred page manuscript, <laughs> which which I then took to Sundance and honed into the script that you know we ultimately shot. But you know, it's funny; it takes perhaps 15 years to make, but when you finally get the ring, green light, it's like 15 seconds and <laughs> you just have to be ready. So that 15 years prepared me. I knew exactly who I wanted to cast <laughs> and um, I was ready to go when I got the light. There's so many interesting dynamics at play in the movie. You're portraying your father. You've cast Damson to basically play yourself. Yeah. And there, it must have been so strange to see your own life in front of you again in the form of this actor? It was very surreal. Um, it was also surreal to actually stand in my father's shoes to actually and look at, you know, myself from his perspective. That was both healing and painful and um, enlightening, I think, overall. And, uh, you know, it's not for the faint hearted, right. but um, it, it was um, really rewarding. And, uh, you know, yeah, ultimately, uh, I'm just so blessed to have had such talented actors embody, you know, uh, those characters that, that were written and, and just bring them to a level that, you know, I couldn't even dream of, so. That's great. Yeah. Damson, what kind of notes would you get from Adewale between takes, given that <laughs> you were bringing his life to screen? <laughs> Um, wow, man, there was many notes. You know, the best thing about Adewale is we definitely spoke about stories and personal experiences. You know, he told me about growing up in Tilbury, and I spoke to him about my personal relationship with my father, and we were able to implement that into the character, you know, and really go into those wonderful moments and have it being earned at the end of the movie. You know, above all things, the message of this movie is the greatest accomplishment in life is to love oneself. You know, so he was... A great director. I like it. Very nice. <laughs> Kate, as you know, you're like my favorite person to talk to. You're my total girl crush. I just, I love talking to you because you're so lovely and hyper verbal and articulate all the time. Not so much in this movie. You're, you're, the character is oftentimes quite miserable and not the friendliest, loveliest person I've ever met. Where did you have to go at the beginning of each shoot day to find this woman? I mean, it was really interesting because, like, as you say, it was, it was Adewale's foster mother, and I was very aware of the fact that this was a real person that Adewale had real feelings about, ambivalent feelings about, and um, I don't know, I think, I think at some point, you know, we, do, we did a lot of talking, and, and he was so generous in terms of telling me loads of extra things that weren't in the script to help me really build a picture of this woman. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I personally not had the experience of raising 10 Nigerian kids. <laughs> um, I had a, a close-ish one, because we did have 10 Nigerian kids in a very small room. And I thought that would be a horrendous nightmare, but they were all like the best behaved, most amazing kids ever. Wow. Um, so it was quite hard being as nasty to them as I, <laughs> as I had to be. So they just were all so lovely. Gugu, for you, you've, you've been directed in this film by an actor. You've just been directed by Edward Norton in Motherless Brooklyn. Yeah. What is it about being directed by actors that changes the game? You know, I think because 
they're coming from the same point of view as, as, as you are and they understand. I think there is a, a shorthand and a vocabulary and just an immediacy of, of communication. And I think especially for Adewale in this story, it being so personal, he's lived through this experience. Um, it's really, it's very intimate, I think, you know, and it's funny some some days, you know, and again, you know, working with Edward Norton and, and, and working with Adewale, you know, where, where your director is in costumes, you know, for a few, some uh, days, you know, and that's kind of a surreal thing, you know, <laughs> a lot of the time, um, just to get into that. But then it actually feels like a collaborative experience, you know, among actors, um, which is, is for me, is, is, is some of the best experiences. For people who don't know what the movie's about, basically Damson's character, you, Adewale, joins a white skinhead group in England and becomes a, a criminal. Um, and there's a lot of tough stuff going on. There's a scene where Google, your character, is assaulted physically. There's a lot of tough stuff, tough words exchanged between the two of you. What would you guys do after a really tough or intense take to try to lighten the mood, or was that not something you were trying to do? Um, <clears throat> it wasn't like whoopee cushions. No. Right. <laughs> I'm sure. We saved that to the end of the movie. Yeah. All right, yeah, exactly. We're doing that now. And doing yeah. it now. Yeah, okay. the, this is the light part. I mean, I, I, think, I think, you know, to give what you said a context, I mean, you, you know, the story really is about, you know, one man's journey. Um, you know, he's, he's given away at birth by his um, uh, native Nigerian parents, which yep. was part of a social experiment that occurred back then. Tens of thousands of Nigerians coming to Britain would do this. They would give their child away. And uh, Damson's character was given to a white working class family. And, and the story really is about him being displaced from his cultural heritage and trying to find mm -hmm. his identity. And in so doing, you know, he falls in with this gang looking for family, love, and ultimately, you know, acceptance. Right. But, you know, becomes, as, as you said, a black skinhead. And, um, but the, there's this wonderful fractured relationship between mother and son where she's part responsible but also trying to help him out, and she has her own flaws. So it's really a love story set against this very visceral, socio-political, unique and original backstory. It's a story that you can't believe that these characters can return from this beyond area that they go, and to see them do so is, is truly inspiring. So I congratulate you. Before you go, since we're in Canada, this is our IMDb Mountie hat. Please. Uh, Pick a question out of here, read it out loud, and you're all going to answer so the question. I thought we were going to have to wear the yeah, hat. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a question to Kate Beckinsale, because I'm going to ask her. Who's your favorite Canadian Ryan Reynolds? Or No, who's your favorite Canadian? Ryan Reynolds or Ryan Gosling? Well, it's Ryan Reynolds because I'm his twin, because... <gasps> I look so much like Ryan Reynolds <laughs> that when he has a movie out and a poster goes by on a bus, I think, I don't remember doing that movie. Oh, it's Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> if you, and honestly, if you look at pictures of a side by side, you will be shook. <laughs> <laughs> this is about to be done on IMDb right now. You know, <laughs> do, do it, do it. The graphic it. is being made as I'm we fully, speak. No, it's, it's extraordinary. You'll, you'll be shocked. Okay. Do, you, do you understand why I cast this woman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Believe me. <laughs> extraordinary. You, you don't have to tell me. We go back. What about you two? Reynolds or Gosling? Oh, gosh. I don't know. It's a Sophie's Choice. I know it. Tough one. I'm Probably Gosling for me. Okay. okay. Why? <laughs> Um, I, I don't know. I just loved his work for such a long time, and yeah, he brings like a real intensity to all of his roles. I'm admired by uh, Reynolds because I could tell he has a great ability to improvise, um, and whether it's comedy or any genre of acting, I think that's a remarkable skill. So, Reynolds, it's been you just like him because he looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> it's been very close, I have to say. The times we've gotten that question, it's almost like a 50-50. I'm curious to see what the final score is. Do you want to try to break a tie, or you're you're going to stay out of it? I'll, say, I'll go for Gosling. Okay. I like the stillness. Nice. You know. <laughs> well, congrats on farming. I'm so glad you got it made. Triple A. Oh, thank you. Well so done. Much. Great to see you all. Thank Take you, care, guys. Bless you. <laughs>